friends today we are going to cover our next topic industrial production utilization and estimation of our phyto constant diogenin so today we are going to cover the phyto constant diogenin in this class diogenin is a triterpenoid saponin if you look at the structure you can see the cholesterol nucleus or the cyclopentanophenin ring system cyclo penteno phenanthrene ring so this cyclopentano phenanthrene ring is the basis for various steroidal compounds so uh, it makes uh, this nucleus makes the compound a uh, saponin glycoside so it is a triterpenoidal saponin glycoside which is isolated from the dried tubers of dioscoria deltoidea and the plant belongs to family dioscoraceae this dioscoraceae uh, family is especially for such uh, tuberous roots uh, in hindi this uh, dioscoria deltoidea is also termed as yam uh, in english uh, sorry it in english it is uh, termed as yam uh, it's a white to off white crystalline powder uh, and uh, and if you look at ke uh, chemical structure you can see it is a uh, three beta sterol or a spiroketal as far as the geographical distribution of this particular diogenin phyto constant is concerned it is distributed throughout the world especially in north america japan china mexico india and nepal in indian subcontinent the plant grows wildly in the western himalayas in karnataka kashmir and west bengal or there are other parts of uh, of the country india also where this plant is found wild in the forests since we are concerned about the phytochemical isolation so we should know in which solvent this phyto constant is going to be extracted out so here you can see that the uh, compound uh, diogenin it is soluble in organic acids and acetic acid so we have to use these acids or organic acids for isolation of this particular phyto constant diogenin as far as the uses of this phyto constant diogenin are concerned it it is mainly used as a precursor for the steroidal synthesis of various uh, various hormone hormonal preparations uh, and due to this uh, uh, medicinal value this excellent medicinal value this plant is widely cultivated throughout the world especially uh, this uh, uh, this phytoconstant diogenin is uh, utilized on a large scale and it is cultivated on a large scale for the preparation of ever increasing demand for hormonal preparation throughout the world moving on to the next slide if you look at the cultivation of dioscoria deltoidea you can see these are the fields where the dioscoria is cultivated and it it requires uh, because it's a it's a a uh, creeper it, it requires a support to climb it's a climber it requires a support to grow and because we are using the tubers or the dried uh, rhizomes uh, this plant requires uh, uh, excellent growth so when this aerial part grows too much only then this uh, uh, this uh, tuberous roots it is uh, generated in the plant so these are the cultivated fields of uh, dioscoria plantation and if you look at the plant this is the tuberous part of the plant which we utilized for isolation of uh, diogenin phytoconstant and this is the aerial part which generally we do not require and nowadays research are being made on isolation of phytoconstant from the aerial pots also this is the dried powder of our phytoconstant diogen so in this way we, we cultivate the dioscoria uh, on a, a large scale in the fields if we look at the mechanism of action because we are we are studying the phytochemical individually so we should know 
how this phytochemical is going to act on your body it has got a uh, tremendous activity in your body if you look into the picture you can see that it helps or it uh, has its role in eicosanoid biosynthesis it helps its action in inflammation so in this way it is acting as anti inflammatory the compound diogenin is acting as anti inflammatory it helps in homeostasis or management of calcium inside your body it also helps in the biosynthesis and metabolism of protein in your body it also helps in metabolism of fatty acids in your body it also has its role and its involvement in cell proliferation and growth and due to this activity uh, this uh, diogenin is uh, uh, especially used for uh, uh, preparation of uh, your uh, hormonal preparations it also have uh, it also induces apoptosis and if something uh, induces apoptosis which is a programmed cell death in this way it also acts as anti cancer drug and because uh, diogenin is involved in the uh, in the uh, protein synthesis regulation so it also shows the antiviral activity because in antiviral uh, in virus replication proteins are involved so in this way it has got uh, various uses like anti inflammatory action calcium homeostasis management uh, protein biosynthesis and metabolism fatty acid metabolism cell proliferation and growth as anti cancer and anti viral uh, uh, drug so these are the mechanism of action uh, come uh, the uses of uh, this uh, phytoconstant diogenin in your body if we move to the uh, extraction method there are uh, two extraction method we are going to discuss since the uh, the uh, phytoconstant diogenin is soluble in organic acids and acetic acid so we have uh, involvement of acids and organic acids in the extraction part so in this uh, this is the alcohol extraction method here what we do we we took the dried tuberous roots and uh, uh, the powder of dried tuberous roots it is extracted with 90% ethanol Uh, for two times, uh, for a time period of around six to eight hours, using Soxlet apparatus. The functioning of Soxlet apparatus we have seen in previous lectures. So after six to eight hours of Soxlation, the mixture is fil uh, filtered. The filtrate uh, thus obtained is that it is a concentrated, concentrated under vacuum to a syrupy liquid. So we use the rotary vacuum evaporator for concentration of this extract. the syrupy extract is then subjected to acid hydrolysis acid hydrolysis using dilute scl or sulfuric acid so here we use dilute uh, hydrochloric acid or dilute sulfuric acid and the mixture is left aside for 2 to 8 hours to after 2 to 8 hours of left aside uh, you you will observe that around 85% of the diogenin which was present in the extract it gets precipitated and this precipitate is then again washed uh, with water because diogenin is soluble in organic acids and acetic acid but it is insoluble in water so you can use uh, the water for washing of this uh, uh, precipitate of diogenin and after washing you can see the the water soluble impurities they can be easily removed from the your diogenin and this is the crude diogenin which can further be purified using alcohol so this is the alcohol extraction method or alcohol uh, isolation method which we can use next we have acid hydrolysis method in this method what we what we do we took the dried tuberous powder of the uh, uh, dioscoria and we reflux it for about 2 to 6 hours using 2 to 4 normal mineral acids in autoclave uh, i i i like to show you the autoclave this is the sorry uh, this is the uh, reflux this is the reflux we use here what 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 happens in the reflux we supply we take the uh, drug and the solvent we take the drug and the solvent 
in the round bottom flask we apply heat and due to the application of heat both drug and solvent they uh, boil together and the uh, phyto and the and the vapors of solvent they uh, evaporates and due to the cold water inlet due to the cold water inlet or uh, at the condenser the uh, vapors they get uh, condensed into water droplets and again the drops they 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 attach to the uh, condenser wall and they came back again to the reservoir this is the reflux condenser we can you we use in uh, this acid hydrolysis method going to the back uh, after this acid hydrolysis uh, with the uh, reflux uh, the mixture is then filtered this the mixture that we obtained after refluxing it is then filtered and the mark the mark is the drug which is collected on the filter paper the mark is then washed with water till it become neutral so you have to uh, wash the mark until it become neutral the neutralized mark which we have obtained on the filter paper it is then dried and the and it is extracted with hydrocarbon solvent you can utilize any hydrocarbon solvent uh, it can be ethyl acetate it can be methanol it can be ethanol and after the extraction the, the the extract is then filtered and the filtrate is subjected to vacuum evaporation and concentrated to a again to a syrupy liquid uh, it is about 25 ml and this concentrated extract or uh, liquid it is then refrigerated for about one hour uh, after refrigeration for one hour you can you can see the formation of crystals of diogenin inside the uh, inside your concentrated extract which are then again purified using acetone so this is the acid hydrolysis method we can utilize for uh, production of uh, uh, diogenin moving on to the chemical identification test of diogenin uh, we can take the sample uh, we we add uh, acetic anhydride to the sample and the mixture is then heated after heating the mixture is cooled and the mixture is treated with concentrated sulfuric acid slowly which is added to the uh, through the side tubes and if there is a formation of green color then it confirms the presence of diogenin in your sample Bec <coughs> uh, diogenin in your sample uh, this is the reflux we have used uh, this is the reflux we have used and this is the assembly of uh, uh, soxalate which we have already discussed in our previous lecture what happen here in the uh, soxalate apparatus uh, here is the heat source we applied the heat we applied the heat solvent vapors they get evaporated they get evaporated and they enters the extractor extractor where we have drug drug packed in the form of thimble the solvent tries to the solvent vapors they try, try to escape through the condenser because but because there is a cold water inlet at this place so they stick to the condenser wall and after get after uh, some time they get condensed and after condensing they fall freely on this uh, your thimble which is packed with the drug and this uh, association of drug with the solvent it uh, it causes the extraction of phytoconstant into the solvent so this solvent as soon as it reaches this height the height of siphon tube this is siphon tube this is siphon tube as soon as the solvent level in the extractor it reaches this height the siphon siphoning starts the liquid which is filled up over here it goes back to the main reservoir in this way uh, again and again uh, several cycles of uh, siphoning uh, they takes place and your phytoconstant it, it get extracted in the solvent uh, properly this is the separating funnel we have already discussed in our previous lecture here the separation of two immiscible liquids takes place the separation takes place naturally but we can also uh, we can also partition the phytoconstant from one solvent to another on the basis of its solubility and its partition coefficient between various uh, various uh, solvent systems this is the rotary vacuum evaporator where we have the involvement of rotation vacuum and evaporation rotation of this round bottom flask heat is applied what happened the 
the the filtrate which is put over here it forms a thin film on this surface and this film the molecules get evaporated at a very low temperature solvent vaporizes at low temperature due to formation of thin film okay simultaneously we also apply vacuum through this vacuum pump and due to this our solvent vapors they uh, they, they uh, the, our solvent get uh, vaporized at a very low temperature uh, preserving the, the thermolabile phytochemical in the uh, in the filtrate so in this way you can recover the solvent also you can recover the solvent the advantage of this technique is solvent recovery and protection of your phytoconstituent phytoconstituent which are generally thermolabile so in this way you can use the rotary vacuum evaporator for uh, efficient extraction and efficient isolation of phytoconstituent without damaging the integrity of the phytoconstituent moving on to the next slide here are the properties of diogenin diogenin has got a melting point of about 205.5 degree centigrade uh, boiling point of diogenin is about 527.11 degree centigrade solubility we have seen the solubility on the very first slide also it is soluble in organic solvents and acetic acid but it is insoluble in water density of diogenin is about 1.0984 the storage temperature for pure diogenin is minus 20 degree celsius and uh, it occurs in the form of white to white crystalline white powder uh, which can be uh, which can be in the form of crystals or in the form of powder depending upon the method of extraction so uh, the water solubility uh, as we have seen that it is a uh, poorly soluble in water so you can see here that only 0.0.02 uh, mg 0.02 mg of uh, diogenin is soluble can be solubilized in 1 liter of water the lambda max for diogenin is about 205 nanometer it means that uh, diogenin shows maximum absorbance of uv radiations at a wavelength of 205 nanometers moving on to the uh, analysis part or the estimation part here we use uh, thin layer chromatography and the high pressure liquid chromatography you can see the tlc specifications we have used for uh, here we have used silica gel which acts as a stationary phase so th these are the pre coated silica gel plates we have used for uh, uh, separation of our phytoconstituent diogenin these silica gel plates they are uh, spotted with the uh, drug or with the standard and the mobile phase we have used for thin layer chromatography uh, are n heptane and ethyl acetate in a ratio of 7 is to 3 volume by volume under these conditions of uh, <coughs> your uh, uh, mobile phases and uh, uh, your stationary phase you can get the uh, rf value retention factor value for diogenin in the form of green spot in the form of green spot at an rf value of 0.47 and this green spot is due to derivatization derivatization of the plate using glycyl acetic acid and methanol in a combination of 85 is to 15 and anisaldehyde in a ratio of 1 is to 1 means this this solvent one part and this anisaldehyde one part together this will form the derivatizing reagent and this reagent is sprayed on your Uh, thin layer chromatography or thin layer your plate TLC plate, and after spraying you can observe the green spot of diogenin at an RF value of 0.47. The sample for this analysis was prepared by dissolving 1 mg of uh, your uh, uh, drug which is supposed to contain diogenin in 50 ml of chloroform because the compound is soluble in chloroform. The standard diogenin is dissolved. One mg of standard diogenin is also dissolved in 10 ml of mobile phase, 
and in this way we have prepared the test and the standard solutions for HPLC analysis for high pressure liquid and uh, chromatography high pressure liquid chromatography we have used the C18 column here C18 column we have used C18 column is the column in which we have the stationary phase silica gel is the stationary phase which is coated with a polymer polymer with 18 carbon atom. So, in this way this polar phase is converted into non-polar phase. So, stationary phase is non-polar here and you can utilize polar mobile phases for efficient uh, uh, analysis or efficient separation of your phyto constant. Here in HPLC we have utilized mobile phase uh, methanol water in a combination of 90s to 10 both are polar solvents and the uh, your stationary phase is non-polar and we can have the efficient isolation. The flow rate through the column was uh, uh, the flow rate of the solvent through the column was maintained at 0.4 ml per minute and a 20 microliter injection was injected into the column for separation. The UV detector of high pressure liquid chromatography or your HPLC instrument was set at 203 nanometers and under these conditions you get the spot of uh, or the peak of your diogenin at uh, retention time of 6.5 minutes. It means that your uh, after the injection of your sample into the column uh, your compound reaches the detector in 6.5 minutes and this is the retention time of your diogenin in the sample. Uh, retention time uh, varies from uh, method to method. If you change the mobile phase then retention time varies. If you change the uh, uh, speed of mobile phase or the flow rate of the mobile phase the retention time changes. So, under uh, above pre prescribed condition you get the retention time value at 6.5 minute. The sample was prepared by dissolving 10 mg of extract in 10 ml of methanol. The mixture is sonicated for 10 minutes and filtered using micro, uh, 0.2 micrometer filter paper or membrane filter and injected into the HPLC. The standard is also prepared 1 mg per ml uh, 1 mg per ml stock we have prepared and from that stock we have prepared several dilutions for preparation of calibration curve. So, what happened? You uh, you prepare the calibration curve using a standard this these are the uh, concentration and this uh, sorry this is the area under curve and this is the concentration so you get a curve and when you inject your sample you get a value of area under the curve and on the basis of area under the curve value you can detect the exact quantity exact quantity of your sample in the of your drug in the sample. So, this is the HPLC analysis of your uh, diogenin in the sample. This is the TLC and HPLC diagram TLC this is the spot green spot of diogenin observed at 0.7 and uh, these are the other hydrolysis product which are also present inside your uh, sample. This is the HPT, HPLC this is the HPLC of diogenin spectra of uh, HPLC spectra of diogenin standard and this is the diogenin in extract. So, there are other peaks also and if we get the peak at this retention time 6.4 retention time the any peak at this retention time gives you the concentration of your sample in the drug. Moving on to the HPTLC analysis of diogenin, we have used the Kamag Linomet uh, applicator, TLC applicator, we have used the Kamag Twin Trough glass chamber, we have uh, Kamag TLC scanner model and other uh, Kamag Wincat software. So, everything in HPTLC is automated. It is very much similar to the uh, thin layer chromatography which we have studied uh, in the previous slide, but here everything is automated sample application is automated, sample visualization is automatic. So, everything is automatic. So, the results can be reproducible. HPTLC, uh, HPTLC analysis has the benefit of reproducibility. The method can be uh, uh, reproduced every anywhere in the world using the same condition. Here we, we have used the pre-coated silica gel plates 
HPTLC plates we have used, uh, nitrogen gas we have used for sample application. The mobile phase here we have used N hexane and ethyl acetate in a ratio of 75 is to 25. And under these conditions, uh, we have performed the, our HPTLC analysis for diocyanin. The TLC chamber was uh, saturated for about 10 minutes. The chamber saturation is also automatic. So, uh, the, there, there is no chance of error because uh, most of the things they are, uh, they are being done automatically. Uh, the total run time is about 25 minutes at a room temperature of about 27 plus minus 2 degree centigrade. Mobile phase run distance is about 8 centimeter from the point of application. The advertising reagent we have used is aniseldehyde sulfuric acid reagent which we have sprayed on the developed plate. After derivatizing the reagent, we have observed the diogenin spot on the uh, on our plate. The TLC plate was uh, dried at 105 degrees Celsius using hot air oven. Here everything drying is also automatic, derivatization is also automatic. You only have to fill the readings into the software and the software here we have used is Kamag Wincats software, Kamag Wincats 5 software. Kamag is the largest uh, manufacturer of uh, HPTLC instruments throughout the world. They are involved in uh, HPTLC studies of various herbal drugs and you can say uh, for herbal drug uh, studies or for herbal drug research, HPTLC is the main instrument or you can say the lifeline of herbal drug research. This is the chromatogram of HPTLC we have obtained in HPTLC. So, it is the peak of diogenin in our sample. It shows the concentration on the basis of area under the curve. This area under the curve, this reading is to be mentioned into the calibration plot. Suppose this is the calibration plot, here is the concentration and here is the area under the curve. You have to uh, choose the that, that concentration and if you interpolate this onto the calibration plot, you get the concentration of your uh, phyto constant in your drug sample. So, this is the HPTLC analysis of our phyto constant. Moving on to the moving on to the uh, utilization part of diogenin or the uses of diogenin, as we have uh, seen in the very first slide that diogenin is uh, being cultivated worldwide because of its uh, high medicinal value. We have got its uh, antiviral action, we have got its anti-cancer action, we have got its uh, anti-inflammatory action, we have got its uh, uh, protein metabolism and hemostasis, uh, hemos calcium hemostasis management uses. So, there are various uses of uh, 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 diogenin, but mainly the diogenin is used as precursor for commercial synthesis of cortisone, pregnolone, progesterone and other steroidal products which are available in the market on large scale. It is also employed in the treatment of hypercholesterolemia, high level of cholesterol, inflammation and infection. It is also used as anti-cancer and antiviral drug. So, this is these are uh, these are the uses of diogenin which we have to study, which we have to remember about diogenin. Uh, thank you so much. This is all about diogenin. This is all about diogenin. In our future lecture, we will cover uh, our next topic which is senocide. Thank you so much.